You're right. All right. I think we're ready. I'm ready today. All these other days, I wasn't ready, but I'm ready today oh, to have a little man. bit of fun. And uh, anyway, great to have y'all. Moon Graffon Show, right around the great state of Louisiana, yeah. and parts of Texas, and all kind of places. And by the way, Brandon, do you know your internet services now? Yeah, I know. But do it. you know on my phone, since I'm not on the same internet service, I got plenty of internet right Well, that's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been laughing. I had a couple of them say, you, you got internet? I said, yeah, about five. Well, mm-hmm. you're not with us? I said, I'm with y'all in spirit. You're just, you just paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm with y'all in spirit. But anyway. Great to have you with us. As you know, folks, uh, we're going to get off the politics and have some fun like we like to do on this program. And, and I've been telling you for the last few days that i got a special guest, and uh, he's a great guy. Uh, people can know him as Louisiana Lightning. They know him as Gator. I know him as Ron. It's Mr. Ron Guidry, who was a Yankee great. He was a really great Major League Baseball for, player. He's well known to coach the Lafayette Bayou Bullfrogs as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great to bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, if you yeah. look back at the history of your life, those are all fine memories. Lead, you know, that was after you yeah. played professional ball. So yeah. that had to be some somewhat of fun for you. Well, it's still fun, but, you know, you get to do something here. Everything that I really accomplished was done, you know, out of state. That was, you don't get to see anything. Uh, there was nothing that was seen here so other than on television. So sure, sure. coming back here and, 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 uh, being able to do a little bit here. It was fun. Um, you know, I got to see, I didn't see any, you know, George Bretts or, or <laughs> Roger Clemens. Or, and you're probably yeah. glad. <laughs> but, you know, well, no, but you always look because sure. there's always some hidden talent. There's always that diamond in the rough guy that nobody, you know, yeah. and then all of a sudden. But, um, you know, just to come back and do something, it was fun. It's a part of your life that, uh, you know, when you look at the... Uh, yeah, but if you look back, that's part of your you life. you like when you're going through a bunch of old papers that you find hidden in your closet and you go like, okay, that needs to be thrown away and you start <laughs> going through it and all of a sudden you pick up something and, you know, you see yourself, buy you a bullfrog. Uh, or I'll reach in my closet and pull out an old pair of shirts or, you know, sure, a couple sure. of... And I got the Bayou Bullfrog. Yeah, it's always fun. To live. Well, Stevie yeah. P. Reminiscing. Once yeah. again, walking in there, I told Stevie P. You were coming by. He said, well, I remember when he, was, he told me that. I said, I got to bring that up again. Ron Guidry, of course, uh, he's a Yankee legend. And uh, he's was had a great, great major league career. And uh, I talked to Ron. We were talking. We did this last year. Yankees and Astros again, playoff and, and things of that yeah, nature. That Before, was two years ago. Uh, it was two years? Well, yeah, because Boston was there. Like, oh, yeah. God, Boston. I forgot about yeah, that. I'm too, sorry. Time right. passes faster when we Man, get older. Man, I know, I know, brother, and I should have <laughs> known that. But, you know, w- what I want you to do real quick before we get to all that is uh, you, people don't understand you still have worked and still worked in the Yankees organization and tell people what you still do. Well, because- I still go to spring training every year in February, just like I always have. My first spring training was uh, – yeah, in, in um, you know, with the team was in 76, so as a big leaguer. Now, I went to spring training as a minor leaguer, but that was in uh, our minor league training camp. So, 72 was my first trip to where, you know, official spring training. And uh, I've been going to Florida every year. In February, but now you are you doing? Are you are you one of the pitching coaches that goes down? Well, exam, yeah, what you, do you, do? you you go down there, and that's what you do. Um, you know, they they haven't been a lot of pitching coaches since the team has been uh, in Tampa. That's for sure. Uh, they they got to Tampa in um, um, in ninety six, and uh, of course Mel Stottlemyre was the pitching coach. Then they've had Larry Rothschild, who is the pitching coach now. Dave Island and and myself. They didn't. They that's didn't, pretty much been it. That, yeah, in all of those years, that's that's all that's been there. So, you know, when you go, um, the pitching coach just comes over, and I meet with him every morning over some coffee, and he will tell me if there's anything in <laughs> particular he would like me to do. Um, he always likes me to see everyone. So the first couple of weeks that pitches and catches are there, I get to see everybody that throws. I'm in the bullpen every day. So if they were invited to the to spring training. Well, you whether get to you, watch them. whether you are one of the established <coughs> players on the on the forty man roster, or you are an invitee. Okay. You know them all. Okay. Because some of those invitees might be somebody you might want to call up later on. Sure. Because you know he has the ability. 
It's like I said, there's always a diamond somewhere that's shining. You sure. just got to polish it to make sure you notice it. So when you get to see all of these guys, and you you play 40 games in, in the exhibition season. And early in the exhibition season, starters only go like two, three, four. They start building up. They don't go seven innings from the first day. No, no, no. So that means if when you start your, your exhibition games, your starters going – two innings, yeah. that means seven more innings has to be filled by somebody. So that's a great opportunity for you to look at your young kids than your established guys. Because your younger kids will probably be doing a lot of throwing in those first t- 10 games until your established guys <laughs> and your established relievers get to the point where they can start extending themselves to throw three, four innings, yeah. one full inning, you know, with a lot of pitches. Because usually now it's a lot of it is all analytical. Oh, no so problem. now it's like, okay, <coughs> we're going to go 20 pitches. Well, you might not even get one full inning in 20 pitches if you have trouble. But that's all you do, 20 pitches. Yeah, it's yeah. not one inning, it's 20 pitches. Starters might have 45 pitches. And it, it looks good if you got so, 20 pitches and you can get out the end in 13. Well, it looks <laughs> it looks, good, looks pretty good at yeah, first. But, huh? You know, <laughs> a lot of times it's not working that way. But you still, I still go, and that way I get to see all everybody that's throwing. So you go there for the six weeks of spring Yeah, the, for basically. the whole time. Now, yeah. now, but but you but you uh, so you're not part of the team at that point. Oh, no, well, no, I'm not no. going to say you're not part once of the I team, get, but you're not. One, look, once <laughs> once it's over, I you come drive home. home. <laughs> yeah, I come home. Yeah, but yeah. Ron, what Ryan doesn't tell you goes down and you cook them between well, frog legs. Yeah. Brian, Brian yeah. does a lot of cooking down there for yeah, them guys, I, too. I probably do more cooking than I do watching. <laughs> <laughs> it <was laughs> well, it's just, a, look, everybody loves to eat, okay? Oh, and, well, and, I do. And, and us that are, that are fortunate <laughs> to be raised up here, sure we love to eat, so... But, you know, eating and, and cooking and eating, that all goes together. Oh, no so doubt about it. A lot of the stuff over the years that, that I always have loved to eat that I bring with me to cook because I can go to spring training and, look, I eat at some great restaurants and everything else, but I can't eat out every night. No. I know I want some of my food. So, <laughs> you know, whether, whether you know, um, my wife Bonnie, whether she cooks it for me and I freeze it or I bring stuff with me and I cook it myself, uh, you know, like frog legs, like rabbit, you know, quails, duck, you know, I bring a few of those things with me so that way I can at least enjoy them. Hey, hey, but I'm, there I'm, are I'm, guys on that team that I have been cooking for 30 years yeah. that they keep telling me, if you don't bring it, don't bother about showing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the other thing too <laughs> is how many people that you actually feed, they say, you cooking what? <laughs> well, <laughs> At the beginning, yeah, but you know, well, like, you know, I got my with, wife got friends because I'm from down here yeah. too. My wife got friends, and Maddie's over there with us today too. Maddie's over there falling out laughing because our friends go, "You cook?" Yeah, they go look in the garbage because they want to know what uh, what package it came out. <laughs> 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 you know, they laugh when my daddy grew up. He made. I tell people in the audience all the time when we eat the baked coon and we eat oh, turkey yeah. turkey neck gumbo, oh, yeah. and people go, what? what? A cow tongue. Yeah. Well, my daddy used to, people would come to our house, and they thought they were getting roast, mm-hmm. and it looked like roast, and it yeah. tastes like roast, but, it's but it was roast. a cow tongue. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. th- that's what I mean by yeah. they would come and say, I want to see what a rapper is. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, like and, and a, you lot can, of the, a lot of the northern guys, a lot of the about. western guys, yeah. okay, you know, like when you start talking about cooking frog legs, because there's, there's two handful of guys, t- um, you know, uh, players, coaches, even the trainers, you know, that love frog legs. They've been, they've, I've been cooking them for 30 some odd years. They've been eating. But what about the year. first time guy? But what? that's it. That's what, you know, <laughs> like when they hear, Hey, what you cooking? <laughs> what is on the table? Frogs. No, yeah. you know, it's, they, but like, well, when you bring, but, when, you cook like a, chicken. when you but cook crawfish, the funniest, when you cook crawfish, but the really funniest thing is they'll try one. And then watch and see the next time who's first in line. Okay, it's, that's how it is. It's, yeah, but that, that's the fun about what you're getting yeah, to do. That's, and uh, That's and all, you know, and, and it's, it's been fun, and that's why you continue to go. Yeah. The game itself has changed so much. That was my next question, too. The that, game has changed a lot. Yeah, that, you know, it's, it, it's taken a lot of fun out of what you used to be able to do. Because a lot of it is analytical. Well, everything's and a it's stat, not, Ron. Everything's it's, a stat. It's, 
it, that's the way that it is. So, you, you know, I'm not upset that it's the way it is. It just, it will change everything. Everything won't be like it used to be. So, you know, you accept, okay, that's how it's supposed to be, but it just makes it longer because where you used to do a lot of things, you're just kind of standing around now. So, you know, if it wouldn't be for the camaraderie and, and the enjoyment that you get from watching them when they're eating this stuff, because every day it's somebody's going to ask, like, what what you cooking tomorrow? <laughs> what you cooking today? You know, what you going to cook yeah, next? Yeah. You know, that if it wouldn't be for that, it would make spring training really long. long. And it's, me, it's long enough. Take a break. Ron Guidry is his name, former Yankee great. Uh, we're going to have him on. We'll talk a little bit about the series, too. Yankees in Houston, which is a big series, and people in this area and around the state uh, that like the Yankees a lot. And mm. a lot of them like Houston. So we got a little talk. We'll talk a little bit about what's going on and uh, things with Ron Guidry, and he's my special guest. All right, folks, we got to take a break. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. We'll be right back. Hi, right, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Having a little bit of fun. And, of course, uh, Ron Guidry, my special guest, Yankee great, uh, played in Major League 13 years. Did I get that right? Did I remember it right? Uh, oh, I missed it by a year. You give me, you cut me off. Oh 14. my God! I would have rather been, I'd yeah. have rather been what over. 14? Well, yeah, fourteen. Yeah. Jesus, why I didn't want to stop on well, I thought, thirteen. I don't know. Why. <laughs> thirteen, yeah. you could be lucky or unlucky. Oh, yeah, 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 that's okay. All right, Ron. Series, <laughs> Houston and uh, the Yankees, which everybody pretty much figured they would, they would have to fight to get in the World Series. It's a one-one deal right now. Just your assessment of the series, because a lot of people are watching. I've watched it. I enjoy watching, especially playoff baseball. Well. From day one, from spring training, that's what you everybody said. Okay, well, you know, Yankees in the East and, um, and the Astros in the West, and that really, it's probably on paper for sure looked like the two best teams. And as the season came and went, you know, you're looking well. You, yep, that's it. That's how it's going to be. So you're one and one. Each team wins. You know, and now you're it's, back to zero. It's now back to three out of five. You know. Um, you know, one, does one team say, have an advantage no, over other? Uh, you know, well, look the on, the only advantage to each one of those teams is home field advantage. That's who would have the edge. Well, the okay? Yankees got the home field advantage now if they can win three in a row. Well, yeah, but you still have to. The guy pitching tonight's not going to be easy. Cole, <laughs> they play. Okay, they play but, three but, today. He's but, good, really but, good. But exact, you know. But ironically, that's how you uh, you win a World Series. Is you know that Verlander's going to pitch again. You know that Cole probably pitches again if it goes all the Six way to seven. seven. No doubt, no doubt. So you're going. You know, if you can beat each one of those guys, maybe once. You know, and you you can steal two wins. All you have to do is beat somebody else twice, yeah. and you can win a World Series because you get four wins, okay? And that's all it takes. So that's how you try to win that World Series. Well, they beat Grinky the first night, okay? Tanaka pitched great. The second game was a great game, and, you know, they they – they actually were winning the game at one time against Verlander. That's correct. It didn't turn out that way. So Houston comes back, tip your cap. They got a great team. It's not going to be easy. Okay. So, but you, but you did what you wanted against Verlander and you had a chance. You had a chance. So, you know, if you would, if, if they would have won that game, it, all the pressure goes to Houston now. Yeah. And, and when you're under so much pressure, you lose your edge, okay? Because now you 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 might try to do things you shouldn't be trying to do. In in some instances like that, some teams are just better than other ones. And so, me and you talked about it before I came back on. I mentioned, you know, I told you that before. We were a big red machine, but we were a Ryan Guidry fan when Ryan pitched with the Yankees. But right. in that series, going back to '76, right? Uh, they were just better than the Yankees. So in, in other words, being close and having a chance. If you didn't take advantage of it, you was gone. And they beat yeah. y'all four nothing. Y'all come back and won, I think, the next two years. We came back, but we beat 77 the 77 and 78, yeah. You know, a yeah. different team because yeah. your team is different. Uh, you know, 
when we talk about things like that, it's not just because of me that we won, okay? Even though I became the number one guy on that team, I was in the I was in the bullpen when we played Cincinnati. Cincinnati yeah. So, you like, the next that. year you become an established starter and you elevate yourself to being the number one guy, but you don't play the team you lost the year before. We're, we were actually looking forward to playing them again oh, yeah. because we thought that, okay, well, it's different this time. Okay, ironically, the Dodgers Don them. Gullett, who pitched with them in 76, came over as a free, free agent. agent. So it makes us so much more of a better team. You want to face them, and then guess what? The Dodgers beat them, so, so you play somebody else. And, and that's how it kind of goes, you know, like today. You have the two best teams playing. OK, um, n- n- right now, you you know, you would 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 New York have the edge. I said already that the team that has home field advantage generally has the edge and that I, that's the same way I feel. But like tonight, you're going like after watching Cole really good and seeing the kind of year he has. Can they beat him? Sure, anybody can. Cole could have a bad game. I don't think so. I mean, yeah, but he could throw a gym and give up two he, runs and eight innings. Well, and he get could beat throw a gym, but <laughs> so could the Yankee pitchers. Yeah, yeah. Severino, who's starting, could throw great, and the bullpen could be lights out. They might not give in. Yeah. One bad pitch could be the games. What? But you're not looking when you're just sitting back, going like. You asking me who has the edge tonight? Astros so, have the edge. Because who's on the mound? But it's just because of who is on the mound tonight. This, in in the series though, and, and and I'm just looking at it from a very distant Boston, but I still follow it. It looks like Houston has a better starting three than the Yankees, but the Yankees may be stronger from the fifth or sixth in and on. Is that a bad assessment? Or is close? Or are they pretty Nick and Tuck? Well, well uh, no, I, your assumption is p- pretty much correct. I would say that the f- first three guys in Houston's rotation certainly is better than the, f- than the first, first three, three guys in the Yankee rotation. On paper. That doesn't mean anything once the game starts. No, no. I, and okay? by the way, you can have a bad <laughs> night, too. <laughs> I guarantee you there's a lot of people that didn't think Tanaka would do w- – what he did. What he did. Yeah. Okay. Against Houston in their ballpark. Oh, you thought because I got to take a break. Ryan Gidry is his name, Yankee legend. And uh, we're going to take a break. More of that and more to Houston and Yankee series. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. We'll be right back. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Special guest, Mr. Ron Guidry, Houston and the Yankees. And uh, it was all predicted at the beginning. They thought they'd be in the, a chance to go to the World Series. I guess, you know, Ron, looking across the, the, the board at the National League Series, which, by the way, I had to watch in, in Nationals, I'm kind of pulling for them because they've just never been there. I guess yeah. uh, I think the Stevenson kid who played at STM and LSU, he was on the postseason roster for the first, for the first series. Yeah. Now, I, I guess they can change that. I didn't even <laughs> call his dad and ask him. So I'm kind of pulling for them, hoping he's still on the roster and he's, he's getting to play a little bit. But I think these two teams in American League are better than those teams. But, by the way, it don't mean they would win the World Series. Well, no. Uh, well, you know, it's ironic that you bring that up. We can talk about that. Um, you know, when you, when you look, I think the consensus from a lot of people that you listen to talk on, um, on the t- television, ESPN, ESPN whatever, yeah, yeah. radio, and all of that, the team that they talk about more than anybody else as being the scariest team is the, the Washington the team. Why? Because they're, because they're starting pitching could be as good or better than anybody else's. They're pitching. They have four guys I know who doing. are good. Scherzer can beat anyone. Okay? It does. He can beat Cole. He's good. <laughs> it, it's that's what you're looking at, okay? I mean, I'm not, you know, and I'm saying it because just as a pitcher who has watched these guys and knowing what they can do, Scherzer can beat anybody. Sanchez can beat anybody. 
Strasburg. Strasburg can beat anybody. Carbon is pitching tonight. I know Carbon has had a couple of bad games in the in the playoffs, but but it's like <laughs> I always say that there are ghosts in the game that make you earn whatever you earn. And Carbon, I don't think has ever pitched in games of this magnitude, magnitude. before. But you got to start somewhere. But you got to start. So if you keep running out there, even if you keep having bad luck, sooner or later you're going to start doing pretty well. well. And, you know that leads me to another question, and I don't know what you, you I, you know, I was funny the, the first time I got to meet you, and I, I got to go look in the room, and I'm not telling everybody your business, but uh, your wife was impressed because you were a Cy Young Award winner in 1978. Mm-hmm. Okay. And and I said, let me get and, and so and you, you got an award. It's a beautiful award, but on the plaque it says your wins, which I think you were twenty five and two. Did I mess you up on that? Three. Twenty five. Say now, nah, I help you back. I'll yeah, be even you with help, you. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but no, I lost and, three. And and the earn run average was it was low. Yeah. One one seventy eight. It was low. Okay, but what I'm saying is, mm-hmm. my question to you is, and I want to I want to take you up to pitching overall. How much harder for you was it to pitch in the regular season versus the playoffs? Did your numbers get better, stay the same, consistency? When I look at a guy like Kershaw, who's had no luck, basically, I ain't going to say none, but he ain't done real good in the playoffs. I remember Greg, you remember Greg Maddox. Greg Maddox right. was as good a pitcher as he ever had. Greg Maddox was really good in the regular season, but in the playoffs, I think he ended up like nine and nine. He won some games. He had some great pitching games, right. but we always thought that he changed the strike zone when he went play in the American League because he didn't get the calls that well, he was getting the National League. Because it's they like they tighten it up. They don't see you. Yeah, and, and it's true. I it, mean, at that time, you had you know American League umpires and National League umpires. Now today, there's only one group, so they you you get to see. So, so my question is, go back to the question. Yeah. How much harder is it to pitch in the playoffs? How did you do in your comparative? You ain't got to give me numbers, but how did you do? And why does it seem to be so hard? It's, it, it, because of the magnitude of where you are playing that game. The 162 games, you're just ordinary games. You have another chance in five days. But where you are at that time in a playoff or a World Series game, you might not have five more days. You, it has to be done today. So and is that why they take five fan rotation and go down to three? Yeah, it's all about who my it's, best are. It's all about your best because that's how you win. When, when you know when your number one is going against that other team's number one, both you guys and both the team have the same job. It's not going to be easy. When we have an opportunity, we have to capitalize on it. Okay, and what does that mean? Well, if you get a guy at second base with nobody out, he better be touching third with one out or less. Yeah. So that way it puts pressure on the pitcher because he can't give up a deep fly ball because you can score. You certainly can't give up, up a hit. But you bring in the infield in to cut the run, but then when you bring the infield in, you cut the amount of time – that they might be able to cut a ball off. So you see, things start Every, to change. The little things matter. The little so bitty much. things yeah. start to matter when you get into situations like that. Because if I give up that one run, that, that could be it. I got to believe uh, that when you get to the playoffs, the World Series, which to me is all the same. I know it's not, but the World Series even makes it that much tougher. It's got to get in God's psyche if you allow it to happen. Because they always talk about experience and experience in the playoffs, and and I re, the reason they say that is when you get to that level, you got to understand it. And if you don't understand it, there's yeah, some people yeah. that get in it their first year and they do great because they just they don't even worry about they it. They don't worry. They don't think about but it. But it is all. a but mentally, yeah. mentally, mentally, does it change the way you do things? It shouldn't. It should. It shouldn't. But sometimes it does. You know, and guys, a lot of guys that have problems probably are guys who have never really faced the adversity yeah, a, in the game let me ask before. You, you take a Kershaw. He's a lefty like you. Yeah. And the guy's a great pitcher. Right. Okay. But in playoffs, he's struggling so bad. Does it become a problem I mentally think it now? Becomes, you're just saying, I hope I can get out. I hope instead of knowing that you can. I think it starts to play on your mind. The only guy that knows for sure is the guy that you're Absolutely. talking about. Absolutely. Because he can tell you face to face, no, that's not, that's not. See, that uh, it. But but he's the only one that really knows for sure. But I I know that I've I've had like you know I've had great success against a lot a lot a lot of teams. But then there are other teams that were out there that 
if you think back about if I faced them 10 times, I could be only five and five against that club. That club probably has more wins against me than a lot yeah. of the other clubs, sure. you know, but it's like, they stack up so well against you. That's why you have problems. But after you face them year in and year out, <laughs> you know you don't like facing them because you keep waiting for things to happen because it always does because that's why they beat you. I'll give you a great example. I hated to pitch against Seattle when they had the kingdom, okay, because we'd only visit that stadium twice a year for for – Six or seven games, depending on the schedule. That's, that's a stadium ball okay. flu, didn't it? They flew out of the stadium, <laughs> but when you looked up, you couldn't see the ball. White ceiling? Yeah. So if you play there every day, you become accustomed to it. But when you only visit it, yeah. okay, so when we play there, Home field advantage, baby. you'd have so many <laughs> things that would b- bizarre that would happen that you'd lose games. I mean, you know, the ball would bounce on the turf. They know when they're hitting, if I hit a fly ball and it's in a, it's a certain height, when that ball comes down and bounces, it's going to bounce 20 feet up in the air. I can go from home to second, even yeah. though it's, a, it's straight routine, away. Routine. It's a routine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's what they do. Our guys, they hit a ball, they see the guy coming in, they stop. And it bounces over there. And it yeah. bounces <laughs> way up. But they could, and, and that's what I'm saying. Things like that start to play in your mind. So what you're asking about Kershaw, he's the only one that knows. But sometimes, sometimes that's how it turns out. And you wonder not, why a guy. It's not a cut on him. It's just not working no, out for him in the playoffs. it's just you wonder why because there are other guys who don't even have the capabilities that that guy has. And they can they go through it like. A knife I, I, goes through butter. I figured you probably. I, I, I figured you okay because a man that eat coon and squirrel <laughs> and frog legs, <laughs> he gonna be cool. See if you were, if they put all y'all in the woods, everybody would be fine with Ryan because y'all go. Yeah, yeah. Y'all might y'all would come out the woods gaining three pounds, uh, but if you follow somebody else, they might lose twenty. <laughs> and yeah, and that's, that's that's being cool in a tough yeah. situation. Well, it's funny because. <laughs> You know, they're like everybody knows that I'm an outdoors guy. I love hunting, you know, and and all my teammates know that I used to love to hunt, and I had a lot of them come down here to hunt with me. But they always, it's the, always the same thing. They'd always go like and ask my father off on the side when they'd get here, <laughs> Mister Gidry. Look, I'm I'm really I'm, I'm a little leery about going out in the swamp and the marsh and all that. What you know? Can you give me some advice? And my dad would always say, "Look, the, the best advice I can tell you is wherever Ronnie goes, just you stay go close away. to That's him." That's a great advice. We'll take a break. Be right back. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Most nonpartisan, nonpolitical show on the air today. <laughs> Brad, 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 what are you doing shaking your head at me over there? I mean, that, that, have, you heard the first I, not, hour, have you heard the first hour of the program? Yeah, the first hour okay, today. Okay, that's, that's good enough. Yeah. Well, that's, you What's going to happen at 10 you, o'clock, though? Well, this man plays Brian Gidry. <laughs> Even Maddie special. said she's no, running no, out no, of no, two. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Gidry, my special guest. And Ryan, Ryan we I brought it to bring Ryan in here. We did this a couple years ago, and uh, it's, it was always a lot of fun. It's great having him. And by the way, I think, thank you for your time. But, but no, I just wanted to let you know in a picture, you, you got to forget the past, right? So, Brian, Randy, forget what I've done in the past. It's been all about baseball as we, as we transcend our program to a sports program. I think I'd be happier. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know. Ryan, you'd probably right. be the first to tell you, uh, sports can be soap opera just as quick. Uh, and you be, played in an organization yeah, I played, that was like that. <laughs> I played in one of the best soap opera in the country in the 70s. So, uh, yeah. So, I got so no here's chance. what we're going to do. I, I brought Ron on to make the transition today. Ron was take over the program. Y'all talking politics and Ron because he knows soap opera. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, let's jump back on the series. Okay. Just your assessment. Forget the first two games. Not the first two games are over. Five games left, uh, possibly. You got to uh, win three to five. They both had won. How do you assess the rest of the time? What has to happen for the Astros to win? What do you think have to happen for the Yankees? And maybe it's the same thing for both. Well, of them. it's the same thing for both. It, it, you got. You're gonna have, um, you know, 
Cole's pitching tonight, but you know he's probably going to get one of the later games, whether he pitches on the regular rest or short. So, you know, you're looking at him twice. You look sixth or seventh. By, by, by the way, real quick, if it rains out tomorrow, they got a big prediction of rain out tomorrow. Right. Uh, how does that affect well, that, that That helps That helps the pitchers too, don't it? <laughs> that's well, a big deal. It actually helps both teams a okay. lot if, okay. if it does because it's going to change. Give them that who, extra day. Yeah. So, anyway – but you're looking at, you know, if everything goes, you're looking at, you know, uh, uh, a Cole and uh, twice, and then you're looking at Verlander again, and then you're looking at, um, you know, like we chatted, you know, when you look at those, each team now needs three wins to secure a World Series. So, you in, in you know, when you're looking at the Houston standpoint, you're looking at facing Cole twice, Verlander one more time. Okay, so that's – if they win their supposedly starts, that's their, that's their, four, that's wins. their four wins. Right, right. Okay, so now you go, okay, well, who do the Yankees have? Well, the Yankees have – you know, they got Severino tonight, but they'll have Tanaka again. Um, so they don't stack up pitching for, you know, guy for guy, great. But the, the thing is somebody else has to pitch somewhere for those teams. So hopefully for New York, when you look at them, you know, if they face Grinky again, because who's going to pitch after Cole? Okay. Uh, Grinky, Miles, or Molly, however you say it. Right. So somebody else has to pitch besides those two guys. So for, for <clears throat> New York, you know, for them to win, they would have to beat those guys to give them a couple of wins because you're going to have to beat – one of those, Cole or Verlander, you're going to have to beat them once to be able to win your four games. And that's how you win the World Series. Uh, the Astros have the advantage, I think, if you have any, which I'm not saying that the advantage goes to Houston. All I'm saying is if Houston has an advantage, is because of those two guys starting three games. Okay, here's the big question. Back in the day when you played, the starters meant everything. Right. I'm, I'm sorry. You had a great starter. That starter was good. He was going to make seven, maybe eight, maybe a complete game. But he was going to be in that range. In this day and time, it's, I'm not saying they don't want to get there because they do. They really want these big guys in the seventh, eighth inning. If it comes into a bullpen deal for all the rest of the games, does the Yankees do the Yankees have the advantage at that point? I'm saying if it becomes a bullpen, if sixth or the ninth inning – it's all about the bullpen for the next five games. Is that an advantage for the Yankees? <laughs> well, between the two relieving cores, I don't know how you would figure out who has the advantage or not because when you look at what they've accomplished on both sides of the fence, they're, they're like first, second, or third in everything that they yeah. have that you're voting. So it just gets down to <laughs> the guy that's standing on the mound. Is he... Nervous or not? Is he thinking about making the pitch or not? Can he do it or not? You know, it it becomes more of an individual. Who is the strongest guy on the mound at the time that he's doing it? Because they they each have a great closer. They each have a great setup guy. Even their fifth, sixth, seventh inning guys are man for really They're good. good. When you look at what they have both accomplished, no, nobody really has an edge. Like I say, if you get, if I'd have to give an edge, the only edge that I would give is where are they playing and who's standing on whose mount. <laughs> yeah. Okay, because I'm most of the that. time, the team that wins most games are the teams that are playing at home. Yeah, most yeah. of the time. Most of the time. Not okay, all the time. I'm not saying every time, well, but no, what Washington. I'm saying, if you go through it fifty thousand times or a hundred thousand times. 75,000 times it's going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. Now you and, take and that. You, it's baseball. You take that percentage. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. So when you took the mound, when you took an opposing, a visiting mound, if you will, when you went to another stadium, was what you're talking about right now, was that always on your mindset and trying to think of how you can flip that advantage? Sure. It's always because, like I said, and when we talked about it just now, mm -hmm. we talked about. That Seattle, the yeah, King Dome. Right, Pitching right. in that dome for me was mm -hmm. a horrible place. It was not only horrible for me, it was for my whole team. Mm -hmm. Because 
You couldn't see the ball when it went up in the air. And when you play there all year, that's your home field advantage. You mm -hmm. know the ball comes down. It bounces on the turf. It'll bounce 20 feet up in the air. Mm -hmm. If I hit a fly ball and I know that it's a base hit, the guy's coming in, I'm not going to stop. Mm -hmm. I'm going because it's going to bounce so high, I have a chance to make it. So mm -hmm. I'm going to make him throw me out. That's fine. And that's what they would do. Our team or opposing teams, they come in, they hit the same ball, but routinely they are looking and they see the guy coming in. Okay, fine. I got a single. They stop. Mm -hmm. But the ball does the same thing, but we stop. Yeah. So all of a sudden, instead of having the guy at second with nobody out, he's stuck at first with nobody out. Okay, now you hit a double, a, a ball to the shortstop, second base, they turn a double play. Mm -hmm. If he'd have been on second, he'd have went to third, you'd have had one out, the guy at third. Now you get a cheap run. Yeah. I get a cheap run at the beginning of the game. It could be different. Who knows? Could be the difference because the I've, I've gone into the ninth <laughs> innings in that horrible place <laughs> yeah. and gave up four runs without a ball going out of the infield. Wow. And you lose because the, the fourth guy hits the ball off the wall, hits it out of the park. Okay, think just things would happen to you in a ballpark like that. Okay, so you, you yes, you will change your train of thought. Last yeah. question: I only got about a minute left. If uh, you get that game seven, does that automatically favor the Astros just because it's at home, or, uh, or it would matter who's on the mound? I think it more it's more or less going to matter who's on the mound okay. at the time, because um, it was if I, I'd have to go back and check, but two years ago they went all the way to seven. And it ended up in in uh, Houston, and I think Altuve scored the winning run on a ball that was hit by Career, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. And he hit a home run the other night. Yeah. So you know you're going like, mm, it, this is kind of like deja vu. I've seen this play out. <laughs> by before. the way, you don't you don't want to see you that know, play out that way. I understand. Well, no, I don't. Ron, I, I I want to thank it, you again, man. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, I do appreciate you, man, coming hey. in. It, it it was really good, uh, and you did good, and you got me. Once again, you're on the most nonpartisan, nonpolitical <laughs> show on the head of day. We're trying to ease uh, into that sports yeah. bowl, brother. Uh -huh. okay. Ron, thank you, brother. Uh, God bless welcome. you. We'll do it again. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, why don't we, why do, why do, we do this? Why don't we do this? Let's see what happens. Maybe toward the well, end of the week, can if, I bring you back? If uh, Yeah, we'll see how it turns out. I mean, if it, it you know, one thing – if maybe it, maybe Friday. If it boom boom and it's over with quick, I might not have time no, to come no. back. But well, if, wait, we, we may, know, let's, let's go, see how it goes. Let's see if see it rains how, yeah. out. Maybe the end of the week, Thursday or Friday. We'll, we'll check and see. Ron Gidry, folks, right, Yankee, guys. great. We got to go.